Okay, so let's jump into code. We're going to do a single client, single interaction client server model uh, because that's the simplest setting that we can use to understand the concepts from the last video. The code that I'm using comes from this page, which I'm pretty sure is Loyola Marymount University. Um, and it's a great page. They've got uh, like this, this date server, which is simple one-way communication. And then they've got a capitalization server, which is two-way communication, like interactive. And then a two-player tic-tac-toe and a multi-user chat. So we'll be following some of these same ideas. The exact names of the variables are going to change a little bit for each project. Um, and that I think that that's good. I thought about making them consistent from project to project, but instead I'd prefer that you think carefully about the function of each of the data types instead of like what its particular variable name is. So let's start by making the server. We'll call it date server. Here we are. And remember the date server is going to need the port that other clients are going to connect to it on. It needs the port that it listens on. So let's create that. Well, actually, let's program by intention. So let's start out with the public static void main instead. So we'll do public static void main. And then server socket is the type of object that we're making. And we're going to call it listener because it listens for client connections. And then we'll have port be a constant here. So let's import some things. Let's import the class server socket. For port here, let's create a constant. Great. And the port will be 9090. OK, so far so good. And then it says unhandled exception, IO exception. Um, IO stands for input output. So we could wrap this in a try catch block, but instead, I think what we'll do is we'll say throws IO exception here. And then we've got to import that. OK, so far so good. So we've got our server socket object. So think back. Think what is the method that lets the listening server socket actually make a connection? Um, if you remember, it was listener.accept. And it creates a socket object or returns a socket object that corresponds to the particular connection that it has, it has accepted. So now that we've got that, uh, let's go ahead and make a print writer so that we can send information to that client. So print writer, uh, I'm just going to call it out, new print writer. Nope. And what are we doing? Uh, the socket is called client. And then we want to get, what are we getting? We're getting an output stream to that client. Let's go ahead and import print writer. And now the last thing is let's, uh, well, actually, perhaps I should have started with what is the purpose of this program. Um, so the date server, uh, a client will connect to it, and the date server will just send a message that contains the current date. Um, so it provides a service in that sense. So now that we have the connection and we've created a print writer that will let us output information to that client, we'll write to the print uh, we'll write to the print writer today's date. Um, and the way we can do that is we can create a new date object and then run oops, and then run to string on the date object. But we have to import date. Uh, yes, from java.util. Okay, cool. Cool. So that makes today's date. I output a to string and now I send that away. All right, so far so good. And then at the end of all that, uh, we want to close the socket. This is an important idea, because if we don't close the socket, um, your computer is going to be keeping track of that connection. And it's just bad management. Oops, except socket is not the name of our socket. Our socket was called, uh, what, client. Great. And then we also should close the listener. All right, so that's. That's the server. Uh, let's go ahead and write a client now. Actually, maybe let's put in a couple print statements so that it'll look nice when we run it. So uh, server is waiting for client connection. And then when we get here, we'll have the server display 
connected to client. And then here we'll print from the server set date closing. Okay, let's do client. So here is client, public static void main. So we could actually pop open a J option pane and ask the user what's the IP address of the server, but instead of that, I think let's just use a constant. So uh, we'll create a socket called uh, to server. Uh, no, we'll just call it socket. And when we create a socket object, we need to give it the IP address of the server and the port. So server IP and server port. And now we import everything. So we'll import socket and we'll create a constant for this uh, string. Yes, that looks good. And because we'll be running the server ourselves, um, the IP address for your own computer is 127.0.0.1. That's a convention that is always true no matter what computer you're on. And for the server port, um, we were running on 9090. And you see here it still says unhandled exception. So let's do the same thing. We'll say throws IO exception. And then uh, what? What did I do wrong? Oh, forgot the R. Ta-da, okay, and now we got to import this. Okay, cool. So we've got the socket, what now? Now we want to uh, create a buffered reader object that can read from that socket because we need to receive the information that the server is gonna try to send to us. And remember, this is what actually establishes the connection with the server. So let's create a buffered reader object called input new buffered reader nope okay and we'll create a new input stream reader and we'll ask our socket to get the input stream from the socket all right so now let's do our blocking operation um, we'll say server response equals and then we'll ask our input buffer reader to read a line. Um, and then let's display it. Uh, let's display it with a J option pane, maybe? Sure. Show message dialog and server response is what we're showing. Do I need to say null here? No, other way around. The null here is because, uh, yeah, we don't have a containing uh, GUI component. We're just going to have the message dialog floating all by itself. And now last, let's go ahead and close the socket. Uh, oops. Socket.close. Um, and then let's exit with a status zero, which is a normal exit status. Okay, time to run things. So uh, here I am back in the date server. Let's go ahead and run the date server. And we should see, what's it happening? Uh, building, okay. And in a second, we should see in the terminal the server saying things. And hopefully we will. Okay, so it says server waiting for client connections. So now let's go to the client and we'll run the client. And there's a message that contains a blank message, so that seems like we got to debug something there. Um, let's go back to the terminal. Oops, not that terminal. Uh, where's the console? So here we are back in the date server console, which I got by clicking on date server. So we see that the server thinks it connected to the client and that it thinks it sent the date and that it closed. So let's figure out what's going on here. Hi everybody, school started and I had to step away. Now it is lunchtime and I'm back and I see what the problem is. Sometimes that's all debugging takes is leaving for a little while. Um, so the problem has to do with print writer here. We need a second argument to the print writer constructor. You see it says auto flush is true. Um, what's happening is 
that ordinarily the the messages don't actually get sent until the print writer buffer is full or unless you actually tell it to flush. Um, auto flush true means that it will send as soon as you run excuse me as soon as you run the print line statement. Okay, so let's run it one last time and see if it works. Uh, here I'm running the date server and we see in the console it says waiting for client connection. Here we are in client and I run the client and there it pops open the message and if I go back to the date server it says client connected sending the date and closing. Oh, I added this print line before I started the video again. Uh, <coughs> where? Right, right here just to make sure that I was sending the right date. Okay, that's it. Um, Next time we'll talk about how to make an interactive session rather than just a single directional communication.